Good afternoon, everyone. This is a certainly a weird experience. Usually, this is something we'd be doing in person, as opposed to obviously by the web. So I hope wherever you are, you're having a great afternoon. If you're in Melbourne, only a few weeks, a few weeks to go now. Hang on in there. But we'll obviously wait a few minutes for everyone to get started. Being so close to lunch, we want to make sure that people have had time to get back into it and see all of the different invites in their inbox and then move through to the webinar, which is obviously how we're going to start our afternoon. So thanks for joining us first and foremost uh, so early. Fantastic to have you here. Uh, today, obviously, we're going to be talking about cloud object storage and using that in a more hybrid approach than what we've seen before. So we're going to have some different speakers, some different demonstrations, and then some hopefully some Q&A at the end from the people who've used cloud object storage before, perhaps people who are new to it, perhaps people who are looking to use it. I know from Ingram Micro, we've had a lot more inquiries recently about how it can be leveraged as a point of view, and more so saying, well, what other options are there out there? So that's something that we'll obviously go through as well. But important to note, if there are any questions that you have as we go, please put them in the chat window. We've got some moderators standing by to ask those questions, to provide them to everyone. And hopefully we'll get some great answers out. And we're always here as well. So obviously you'll all have my email address on the back of this. If you do have any questions, my phone number's at the bottom. For those of you that um, I've met before, obviously it'd be great to catch up again. Uh, however, pick up the phone, shoot me an email, absolutely A-OK. -okay. So I can see that we're starting to fill up about 20 people so far. So we'll give it a few more minutes, probably kick off at around four or five past to make sure that we don't miss anyone. So if you want to grab that last cup of tea or coffee because it's the afternoon, go for it, be my guest. We want to make sure that we've got everything ready for the next hour. Beautiful. Okay, we're all ready here. Oh boy, so I hope everyone's having fun and the home office has gotten a little more substantial than when you first started working from home during COVID. I know mine's had a pretty big makeover to make sure that the screens are there because that that's the make or break between a good day and a bad day for me. Looking at a small laptop compared to looking at a 30 inch monitor or something is just night and day, especially for your posture and everything else. So no doubt when we talk, that's gonna be one of my first questions is, what's your home office set up like? Is it comfortable? Are you doing okay? Because without that, it really, really does make for a tough time. But also, if you've got any suggestions, always open to hearing what makes your day better when you're working from home. I know I've been getting stuck into plants in the background, so hopefully the theory is that they put good air into your home office and working environment and filter it out. So I know in sales, there's probably a lot of hot air throughout this room at the moment. So. I'd really love to think that those plants are working over time and getting everything back into the uh, environment and filtering out it, filtering it out a little bit. Okay, so we'll kick off in just about a minute. So thanks for hanging in there. And thanks for being on time if you were here on time. Otherwise, great to have you for those that have joined in the last minute or two. Brilliant. Okay. No messages from anything. Okay, wonderful. Well, what I might say, guys, is let's let's kick off, let's get started. We've got a good bulk of the people that we're expecting online, so thanks for joining us. And as people join, obviously, they'll, they'll catch up because it's a bit of a soft start with everything we want to make sure we're all comfortable with what we're going to discuss and again if you have any questions please put them in the chat window so that we can make sure we address them and while we've got our experts here today we really make sure that we use them and use their expertise okay so kicking off 
uh, hoping everyone can see my screen. Shout out in the comments or in the chat if you can't. But let's go. So today's topic is accelerating with cloud store with cloud object storage. Um, one of the things that we want to do here today is to really make sure that we've got a clear picture as to what cloud ob object storage is and what it can be as well, because there's a lot of different areas that people believe storage is and cloud object storage is probably one of the less understood ones so that's why as part of our harley davidson campaign we wanted to make sure we bring this message about what it is what it can be and what it can do as well so certainly if there are any customer questions that you've had feel free to uh, post them in the chat window so we can make sure we address those beautiful okay so our speakers today, we've got three people besides myself as MC and making sure that things sm flow smoothly. We have Arju from IBM, who's going to be giving us a rundown on cloud object storage, what it can be used for. We've got Michael from IBM Technical Sales. He's going to be giving us a demo for provisioning using IBM Cloud and to make sure that this is something that is easy to self-service easy to use and easy to measure as well because obviously we want to make sure how much we're using and then we have tasha from the ingram micro team who's going to be giving us a, a lesson in how to provision this using ingram micro cloud marketplace it's one of the new distribution channels that we at ingram have opened up to make sure that self-service is as easy as possible and you don't need to mess around with quotes quote desks or anything that could take longer and this gives you flexibility to strike up a point of view and potentially create different options on the fly so hopefully that's something that everyone will be either new to or also make sure that we can uh, give you a first-hand experience as to that so our agenda today what we're going to be going through probably been through a few of these but forgive me so an introduction to IBM Cloud, what it is, what it means. This may be rehashing it for some people. So hopefully it's something that we can provide more information to and give you a better idea as to perhaps how it's evolved. Because like all clouds, they don't stand still. The benefit of using this is so that we can integrate more services based on feedback and advance what's possible compared to on-premise. We'll have some sales enablement for IBM Cloud Object Storage, helping to pick up, is this a deal that Cloud Object Storage could be used for? Where is it used? Where is it not used? Uh, and that'll hopefully relate further to the real world and bring it down to earth as to its benefits in real life. We'll then have a technical discussion and walkthrough and that as i said is where michael will be showing us how to provision and how to go from start to finish uh, to show just how simple it is we'll then have tash going on how to order this through ingram micro cloud marketplace some questions uh, hopefully we'll have some people that have had thought-provoking um, client scenarios that they're remembering throughout this and feel free to white label it i have customer a or something along those lines just so we can answer them with as much specificity as we can. Um, and then we'll have a, a discussion. So again, if there's any customers or any current opportunities where you're going, oh, they want to reduce costs because of COVID, could cloud object storage be cheaper? We'd love to help out with those and really see what questions we can answer. Um, obviously, if you want to have these in, in private, that's absolutely fine. And the IBM and Ingram team is here to help. However, while we've got a great forum here of you know, some of the biggest brains in the universe, in my opinion, I think it'd be a great idea if there are any of those questions where we can bring them to light and collaborate together. So let's get started on the questions. So before we started, what we wanted to do was to get some context and hear from the audience as to what kind of experience you have with cloud object storage as well that's something that we want to know because obviously we want, don't want to cover things twice if we do have an advanced audience here today and also we wanted to make sure that you've got well that we're giving you the right information 
So don't forget, we do have the Harley Davidson campaign going on at the moment, which is multifaceted. You've got an opportunity to win a Harley Davidson live wire bike, which is, a, you know, truly first of a kind for Harley Davidson. Um, and I see that we've got the poll open at the moment. So do you offer or recommend a cloud backup solution for your customers today? I think we'll give you 30 seconds to answer there. I know okay, you can't see so. that, Jay. Oh, can you see the, the chat box? I, 71%? I can indeed. Oh, cool. Awesome. 71% yes and 29%. Uh, don't recommend a cloud backup solution. So obviously the 29% are who we want to convince today that this is probably something that should be in your wheelhouse and could only provide a competitive advantage. But the 71%, we want to take that to the next level and make sure that you know exactly what IBM Cloud has to offer because it is one of the cheapest in market. Everyone always thinks Amazon S3, the old open gateway to all of your data is the cheapest. However, I think that's something we can dispel today once we hear from our experts. So our next question is, would you consider including cloud object storage from IBM as an option in addition to or instead of tape storage? I know even this week we've had that question of, well, let's have a look at what tape would be to refresh for long term container backup compared to cloud object storage. So what we're interested in is if you had like for like and you had the same requirement that could be fulfilled, would you include both? Fantastic team. So everyone, so 100% included as an option today, which goes to show that we've obviously got a lot of forward thinkers on the on the webinar, which is fantastic. And that's something where, again, we'll only try and accelerate that, accelerate that today, keeping with the Harley Davidson theme. And don't forget to stay until the end because we will be giving away some prizes, uh, as specifically a Harley Davidson branded and official helmet and gloves. And for fantastic questions or any any kind of collaboration, We'll make sure to take care of you with some prize packs as well. Obviously, Harley Davidson and Harley Davidson only. So make sure to stick around. So now on to the third and final poll. What's the most important data storage parameter to you when you're looking for storage options? Unlimited data storage, scalability, or flexible storage class tiers? Okay, so the results are in, and it looks like coming out on top is flexible uh, storage class tiers, which some people go towards t-shirt sizes, some people go towards the, the use that a customer would have, and that would be something that goes into a bit more depth. Scalability also coming pretty close though. So interesting to see how we wanna make sure that even our biggest customers, that sit with us are people that can leverage cloud object storage as well. And now we have some further um, important parameters for data management this time. Obviously with unstructured data, this is a, a large thing that's coming into a lot of workloads at the moment. So do you, uh, is the most important factor data protection and security? managing and storing of unstructured data or archival and backup capabilities. So that's taking it a little bit deeper. Okay, so it's only one of two. So we've got data protection and security coming out on top. Very prevalent conversation and I don't blame anyone that had that answer. Obviously every uh, organization is seeing an increased amount of attacks. 
but also data storage and backup is a, another one. So great to see that. Okay, so now we'll we'll move on to the sorry the first uh, speaker that we have today, um, being Arju, who's going to give us a, a better look into what IBM Cloud Object Storage is, what it does, some customer examples, and take us a little bit deeper so we can get some of that education. So I'll now hand over to Arju. So give me two seconds and we'll be off and racing. There's going to be a lot of Harley Davidson puns as we go through today, so watch out for them. Sorry, guys, but I don't miss an opportunity like this whatsoever. All right, Arju has, we can hear him. Yep. And I'll just pass video. Okay, Arju, over to you. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Jay. Let me just make sure everybody can see the right screen. You can give me a thumbs up or a yes, we can see the screen. It will be appreciated. There we go. I can Excellent. see it now, as you. Thank you, Tasha. Uh, well, good afternoon, uh, team. Um, it's 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 great to be able to do this. They're not great doing it remotely. Um, I, I do miss coming down under. Uh, I'm based in Singapore. Name's Arju. Uh, I'm, I'm responsible for the IBM public cloud sales and, and, and revenue levers in IBM. Um, in the cloud business, I'm, I'm sure we are all going through uh, various conversation points that our customers are taking with us. Um, and it's not about you know why cloud anymore. It's, it's, it's really about what cloud and how cloud. Um, I'll, I'll start off with a very quick introduction on IBM Cloud. I always believe that there's so much happening within the IBM Cloud um, that, that, that it, it, it gets overwhelming or it gets conveniently forgotten. Um, within the cloud business, um, there is you know, stacks of offerings and services today that we take to market. Uh, you obviously know of the uh, big rate company that we bought last year that's now very well, you know, incubated into our 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 service offerings and even our software offerings. Um, I, I would dare say that we are the best um, VMware on cloud service provider today. Um, and only going by the stats of the number of customers that we have running live, and not too much of marketing jargon to support all of that, of course. Um, when we look at the transition customers are making. Um, uh, storage is actually a, a, a real golden nugget uh, that I myself have you know, uh, uncovered in the past couple of months. But then when you reflect how other hyperscalers have actually started their business, um, you know, it's it really evolved from you know, storage to what you know, it, it's doing today. But we in IBM have had, a, you know, I think uh, the best kept secret with the acquisition we made a couple of years ago called CleverSafe. And now we rebranded re and continuously innovating to uh, IBM Cloud Tech Storage. And, and, and again, extending that into everything relevant that our customers are doing uh, with the platform as a service um, you know, requirements that they see. And as, as, as we take away from the poll, um, security is, is obviously uh, one of the key parameters that we get questioned on. Um, and, and this is really a nice segue into the three core tenants uh, on, on what IBM Public Cloud is, is, has been built upon, uh, or I would dare say rebuilt upon since now three years ago. Um, you probably have seen this slide, you know, floating around. Uh, but I just want to quickly emphasize that the three main tenants that we, you know, consistently are going to strive towards is around enterprise grade. Um, this is this is a very important proposition when customers, you know, uh, grow and evolve their projects. Leading into enterprise grade, obviously, is the other tenant around open innovation. Um, this is again, um, you know, a conversation point that a lot of customers. Are looking to you know embark on the cloud and and, and looking at open technology stacks. Um, one of the key things I'll, I'll quickly highlight here is that again the IBM Cloud platform has been re-architected um, you know a couple of years ago to really uh, be 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 relevant on a you know Kubernetes-based platform and not a virtualized-based platform. And and really what that means is allow customers to you know uh, build, manage, design and really move conveniently uh, across cloud platforms. Because we are obviously aware that this is a hybrid cloud organization. Our customers are you know, building hybrid cloud organization, but more relevantly also going towards a multi-cloud organization. 
Now, right in the center is the is the is the tenant on security. Um, again, security is a conversation that is you know being taken with customers at multiple levels, from the compliance requirements down to you know can I can I actually manage my own keys within those services? And again, this is this is a, a big a, a big piece of investment that IBM has made and will continue to make. Uh, the thing that IBM subscribes to is around trust. Uh, and, and this is the piece where, you know, as customers evolve into building things around chatbots, into call recording solutions that might be sitting on top of a cloud platform, um, IBM uh, supports the, the, whole, the, whole, the whole trust mantra it's extremely seriously that it's even embedded into the contracts. And this is not something that I think we do too well of, of getting out there. Uh, but again, I want to leave us with, if, if there are three things why IBM Cloud, it's about being enterprise grade, you know, being being ran at you know, larger customers and consistent, being open to ensure that we embed and you know uh, incubate investments customers have already made on prem and going towards the cloud, and obviously uh, supporting that to uh, security leadership. Um, but back to the session today, um, you know why uh, IBM Cloud Object Storage, uh, and, and this is this is really a, a punt. Um, that you know um, we, we we all can see, um, because when we talk to customers about storage, um, we typically get. Sorry, can you see my slides? I just saw something happen. I went back to yep. non-presentation mode. Oops, I'm not sure what happened there. That's better. All right. Um, thank you. <laughs> And, and, and really, if we, if we look at that, um, storage becomes convenient uh, as a conversation because data is at the heart of every business. As we relate to it from social media platforms to enterprise system platforms, like for example, Netflix, for example, um, how the data gets stored matters. How the data moves really, really matters. Go ask Netflix, they are playing um, egress charges, which is network charges, you know, um, you know, extraordinarily to AWS. And that's a conversation I'm happy to have. Uh, not just because you know it, it can quickly get out of control from a cost perspective to the infrastructure, but because storage architecture today becomes really the value that customers build their overall IT architecture. You know, we've always heard this you know uh, terminology around garbage in, garbage out. And today, a lot of organizations are actually taking a step back and going, "What does my data architecture look like?" Because the reuse of data becomes a lot more important. We've all seen analytics projects that kicked off by organizations, but we also see within those analytics projects, uh, customers do struggle to get the real value out of it. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll just ask us to think about you know uh, our own experience, right? I mean, I would say in 2000, you know, in the year 2000, when we used to hitch a ride in the taxi, um, there's hardly much data getting generated. It's fundamentally a cash transaction. But today, you know, when you look at, you know, uh, leveraging a transport aggregator, like, you know, for example, Uber, it generates terabytes of data and the data crosses across even financial applications for it all to make sense and, you know, give customer consumer points and all of that. I mean, this is, this is the heart of every organization today. And, you know, you've not heard this, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I would say you're living in a, in a shell, but data is the new oil or is it? <laughs> But again, the cloud storage market size was valued at 46 billion in 2019. It is evolving at a keg of 22%. So not only are customers going to make investments into the storage uh, decision that they have, but they're going to continuously evolve. And the target that we've seen from what analysts have said is close to $230 billion by 2025. That's a massive opportunity for us to go after. Now, uh, as we look at opportunities, we also look at you know the business challenges, um, especially in these uncertain times. Um, you know, we've, we've we've come through the need of organizations looking at cost reduction, new ways of working, but still driving innovation. We're seeing industries grappling with their assets that are becoming less relevant. Legacy architectures, models, and technology assets are tying organizations to the pain points that limit their growth possibilities. Let's take for example. In this case, a, a use of a tape drive, where there's a high overhead of resources to support a backup procedure, and yet limiting in nature. Now, this this is really uh, constraining how organizations actually manage uh, the overall investment. 
And COVID-19 has been an unprecedented wake-up call, actually. Organizations everywhere have now got a powerful reminder of the importance of systems, about resiliency, and more importantly, about scalability with security. And, they are, and organizations are very clearly turning towards cloud or even a hybrid cloud conversation. And CIOs and now the line of businesses are looking at ways where they manage their overall cost, again, looking at the balance between a capex to opex, making sure that the data content that they um, generate and they manage becomes a lot more relevant and scalable that they can reuse. And all of this is becoming very, very convenient, as you, know, you, you saw in your own polls, um, with the security element that comes within storage tools like cloud object storage. Um, this is, again, going to be a very, very important aspect of a conversation that we should have with our clients. But me as a sales guy myself, sometimes we take it for granted and we go straight away shoot at the hip to all the cool, fun stuff. But if you take a step back and actually ask customers questions, and I did it myself for the past six months, and I realized that we have actually generated various opportunities where we've seen other hyperscalers or even other cloud service providers exist, but now look at IBM Cloud for the proposition of today, building towards the future requirements of the enterprise systems and even the cloud native requirements that customers have. Um, so again, the existing storage uh, that customers have um, is not designed for scalability. The existing storage that we have is also extremely expensive. We recently, um, actually down in uh, Australia, won a deal uh, of a customer where we provided them close to 36% in savings of moving their storage uh, requirements to the cloud. And obviously, with, 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 with these customers running you know, storage through tapes, they've got seven years of you know, uh, privacy requirements that we were able to adhere to and yet give them the savings that they are requiring in, in, in obviously these times. Um, the other key thing that I think will, will be very important around you know, the, the focus on uh, data storage is around access, accessibility. And, and this kind of ties in also into security. How the data gets fundamentally used, who uses that data is only going to be logical if it's well managed within that cloud environment or the hybrid cloud environment. I'm confident when we do the demo later on, you'll see some capabilities where this is very conveniently also accessed. And it's again, a key leverage on what IBM does within our cloud proposition. So the new type of storage service is fundamentally needed, obviously to protect the cost case, uh, to, to, to obviously also innovate into uh, new projects that customers are looking at. In, in these times, never than before, customers are asking themselves, CFOs are asking themselves of all the investment they have made and which investment can they actually reproposition or optimize, uh, right? Um, when we look at all the cloud native requirements of customers, we also know that many of them are looking for capability around scalability, but at the same time, flexibility. Meaning if I have a project that needs to develop an app, I want to run it for six months, but I want to turn it off without having an implication. Again, this is not something that traditional uh, storage uh, uh, technology can provide. And as we access data globally and we access data across multiple systems, leveraging Internet of Things, the collaboration tools, one can only um, you know, appreciate that not only do you build the data to transition within your own organization, but you build the data to transition out of your organization to multiple personas or multiple users. And this is where you've got the total cost of reduction. Um, and I would quickly just mention that one of the key proposition on IBM Cloud today is we do not charge for ingress data coming into the IBM Cloud platform, but we also do not charge for egress data leaving the IBM Cloud platform up to a certain capacity. And it's a very relevant capacity. Other cloud providers charge you immediately on the data that leaves that data center. And again, within the environment, there are also network costs that will hit data charges as data transfers between in and out of the data centers within the client environment as well. So again, the TCO conversation is one that I encourage us um, to deep dive into once you identify what the customers are doing with their business requirements and what storage capability they need. Um, I, I just put this here because I've been getting some questions from you know sales guys as well. 
you know, what do you mean by object storage here? You, you know, don't customers really have that? And really very simply putting, there are three types of cloud data storage, right? Object storage, which we're discussing today, file storage and block storage. Each offers their own advantages and have their own use cases. However, applications developed in the cloud often take advantage of object storage, scalability, and a technical term, but the metadata characteristics. And this is the piece that is really important because block storage is more binary, while file storage has metadata, but it's very, very limited. So think about an MRI scan here when you go to you know, the doctors that requires deeper metadata or data of data information that, that must be housed within that single instance. And this is where it becomes very logical uh, to run it as a object storage versus the other storages that's available. So again, it's, it's a lot more um, um, manageable and less expensive. So this is just a nutshell why we're moving towards object storage. Um, the other things uh, supporting why object storage, again, is when you look at file system performance, this is one of the largest concern a lot of the customers that I've been dealing with really, really have. Um, performance is something that, again, links back to security, it links back to user experience, which is a great industry in its own. So as customers even invest into customer experience kind of projects, how the data is stored, how the data is accessed is also becoming really, really critical. And when you look at all the front end customer experience projects that our, our customers are investing to, they very typically need to integrate or interface back with enterprise systems. And how the data flow happens, again, it's going to be a conversation that customers are now either having or will have over a period of time to make sure that it's much more manageable and much more cost effective as well. IBM Cloud Object Storage. Now, this is where I would say IBM Cloud Object Storage is a cloud scale solution that's able to address any requirement or use cases that a customer will have around that business use case chart that you saw earlier around AI, IoT, uh, analytics, but also be able to start small and scale over a period of time. This makes IBM Cloud Object Storage extremely flexible. Now, when we look at flexibility, we've also now supported with pricing mechanisms that allow our customers to actually not be too concerned of how their storage requirements are. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that very, very quickly. Security and control is something that it's very, very close and dear to a data professional when you're looking at cloud object storage. And again, will you see that besides just the durability that we can prove to customers, there's also capability within the cloud platform that allows our customers to manage their own data and encryption options that they typically will have. Now, when we look at security and we're talking to a FSS or a financial service cloud uh, uh, customer, for example, not only do we offer the capability within cloud object storage, but we can then encompass it with, uh, with advanced security tools like our hyperprotect services or even a high trust services. So again, as you start very, very uh, nimbly with our customers on storage options, how and what the requirements are around customer security, IBM Cloud can support that in whichever industries customers have. The last point, which I, I mentioned earlier on, and, and, and I'll re-emphasize that, is really around the uh, data charges uh, around our, our cloud object storage requirements. And this is where, again, when we sit down with our customers and we build through a TCO model with them, we come out better every time. I have not seen a deal over the past now nine months in my own experience that we have lost because of cost. In fact, I think this is one of the um, recommendations I put to everybody on this call is to identify the opportunity, look at the use case and bring it back to IBM or even uh, some of the England colleagues to make sure that you get the best support to the to, to, to solution for your customers. When we talk about IBM Cloud Logistics Storage, um, I think we also typically ask ourselves who should we address? And I think this is where, because of the different various use cases that we've seen, um, um, we have 
been very very engaged with developers because they are you now running the line of business and they own and they manage the uh, the data themselves they align to uh, you know very very broader requirements that a customer may have but if it's a startup for example these organizations really have developers who are founders that run with this data professionals again this is where they look at um, the constructs of durability scalability uh, and, and, and and obviously flexibility in how that data fundamentally is designed and it's transferred in and out of applications to support the business and this is where again we have got capability that allow us to register the requirements with such data professionals system and it admins uh, you know we'll touch them very very closely as we identify the business use case and we identify the compliance and security use case how all of this works uh, within a client environment typically is done with system and IT admin. And again, today as part of the IBM Cloud Portal demo, you'll see some capability that are very easily accessible for them to actually manage. Even talking about cost management, within IBM Cloud today, you have your calculator that's available online that you can actually do estimation and understand where you as a customer or where you as a seller will eventually land for your customers. So the use cases that we have obviously supported is, is coming from um, in, you know, various initiatives, as I briefly spoke about, um, backup, archive, um, you, know, you look at migration use cases where they are fundamentally temporary. Uh, again, this is where IBM Cloud Object Storage is, is supporting you with our smart tier um, uh, pricing model today. But again, supporting all of that as they migrate or move into much larger projects that customers, enterprise customers are looking at which is around modernization of the application stack, looking at IoT requirements where you, you fundamentally have devices sitting out of the systems uh, to fundamentally send data back and manage all of that together. And analytics is again, one of the key uh, proposition that IBM, not only just within the IBM Cloud Platform organization, but also IBM uh, Cloud with data and AI teams have come together and built Cloud Packs, if you have not heard of that. And Cloud Packs is also, very, very critical for, for, for IBM sustainability into the cloud and more importantly for your customers who have advanced analytics requirements and been using analytics tools that have been around for a really long time and looking to consolidate that. Um, so again, this is very, very important in how we proposition the storage conversation leading up to any kind of analytics requirement that customers may have. Um, the pricing is available on the cloud platform. Uh, you know, as soon as you access it, you know, you 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 will see uh, all the pricing is, is is now made available. But I quickly want to talk about uh, the introduction of of smart tier. Um, smart tier is today the new storage class that IBM has launched that offers our clients a simpler pricing structure for managing any workload, especially those dynamic workloads that I, that I briefly spoke about, and and this also offers them the cost optimization. The smart tiers uses a dynamic pricing model that reflects your monthly activity. Each month, you'll be automatically assigned a capacity from hot requirements, cold requirements, uh, and, and really have that uh, lined up to your uh, business storage retrieval and number of operations that you have running on your IBM Cloud. Um, this is something that I believe has made a lot of our customers excited because it's not going to tie them in into understanding what the overall requirement is, but again, try and buy as they go through uh, the requirements in IBM Cloud Object Storage. Again, there's no minimum duration, uh, there's no minimum object size, and this is where, again, when we typically have a TCO conversation, we stand out for our customers. Um, I'm gonna skip this slide and just come back to this um, resiliency slide. Um, and obviously within, within Australia, uh, IBM today houses a MZR, which is a multi-zone region. IBM Cloud multi-zone regions have three or more data centers located in proximity to help ensure the availability and the resiliency. These offers full and consistent set of services to support our clients. MZR, as we, as we call it, is really a value proposition that we allow our customers to adhere to the SLAs. And this is where when you look at what IBM provides in our SLAs versus the competition as well, we actually typically stand out and we do adhere to the requirements of the system and IT admins and even the data professionals. Our MZR today you know, includes the full IBM Watson uh, stack, uh, including obviously your IAS, your cognitive requirements, 
and I also connected through point uh, through to two uh, points of presence to help maximize the resiliency over here. And one of the key things you'll also realize is that the way we design our MZR is very, very different from how you see hyperscalers design their availability zones. So if there's any requirements that are coming from security professionals in your, in your conversation, please do bring that up. There's a lot of supporting documentation that can also make sense of what IBM MZR can provide for our enterprise customers with deep complexities around that as well. When we start with cloud object storage, um, there is a lot of extendability, or I would say drag that can happen when customers' use cases evolve. There's a lot that happened within the IBM cloud object storage, but also there's a lot of incubation that typically needs to happen to coexist with some of the investments customers have made. And again, there are a lot of interface and even integration already available to extend uh, the conversation that you take to uh, your customers around cloud, cloud object storage. Uh, again, I've included a link over here. If you have any conversation that you have with your client and you're being asked the question, can you interface, can you integrate? We have all that data available for you to just get out there and, and, and just continue that conversation with your customers. Compliance, um, this is uh, again consistently being updated. Uh, also on this slide, you have a link. Uh, so if you do get questions around, are you compliant for a particular stack? Of, of course, even in, um, um, even in Australia for IRAP, uh, around assessment and certification, this, these are conversations that today we can very conveniently already have because this is now made available very, very easily. The link is there. Again, do send this to your customer as well if they have any particular questions or do come back to us and we'll be able to support that on, uh, on demand. Now, I want to pick up a really nice use case here with Base Media Cloud. Um, and when you look at you know, Base Media Cloud, this is very, very typical for any kind of customers where you have rising volumes of media files you know, being, being, being kept, rising volumes of um, media files even being transferred in and out of their own data centers. And this was really incurring a heavy cost, but also massive manageability issues for them. And when we position IBM Cloud Object Storage for their requirements, um, we obviously even brought in IBM Aspera, which is a which is a solution that allows for high-speed transfer. And when we brought IBM Cloud Object Storage and Aspera together, there was no other solution that Base would even look at because for three reasons, this, this, this deal converted within a couple of weeks. Um, we've got a use case that was very convenient to migrate into a cloud environment. We've got a use case that allowed the customers to transfer that very, very quickly with high-speed data transfer with Aspera. And more importantly, the overall cost proposition just stood out for them when they compared to their existing uh, uh, tools, but also with other cloud vendors. There is ROI conversations we can take with customers. There is TCO conversation we can take with customers. And if you are looking at various use cases across any industry that today you, you manage, you own, um, there's a lot of information that uh, IBM today can provide. This has been in our toolkit for a really, really long time. There's a lot of expertise uh, that we can also bring to the table. I would just encourage you to understand what are your use cases with your customers, understand what requirements you're typically being faced with, and any kind of similarity you want to bring uh, there's a whole gamut of tools and whole gamut of people that we can obviously include uh, to make sure that you progress your conversations very actively. I have put up some slides here uh, for anybody's benefit to review basis on the use cases up there. Uh, but again, as I encourage, you know, bring it back on so we can, we can, we can have the conversation. Um, I've got last two slides. One is around our IBM Cloud Object Storage um, you know, offer that's available on the IBM Cloud. Um, again, we are we are we are providing customers up to $1,500 worth of credits. Uh, again, at no cost. Uh, this is obviously time bound and needs to be accepted by September 30th. And we have launched this uh, now since a couple of months. And we've seen a really really high uptake of this. And, and I will encourage you to ensure that you or your customers go sign up and just play around with it, and you'll get a preview of it as well with Michael. Um, competition. Um, this is obviously as a sales guy, you'll ask, you know, why IBM versus the other tools. Um, the content is, you know, tremendous, uh, but I summarize this for your own benefit. But I'll again say that, you know, this is going to help you in your conversations when you send out an email to your client or when you pick up the phone. But the devil is in the detail when we do, um, you know, cloud object storage conversation. 
and typically uh, we will be happy to engage and make sure that you get the right support to to ensure your proposition whether is it a scalability requirement a flexibility requirement a security requirement overall the cost aspect of it I'll stop there um, and again make sure you understand uh, the requirements that IBM um, IBM cloud object storage can provide uh, the typical use cases and the value that we bring in into in, in, into the conversation um, and happy to take any questions or pass it on to Jay. Wonderful, thank you Arju. Uh, a lot of things there that resonated with me on a, I guess on a really high level, not being an architect myself, but one of the things that I, I did wonder, and I wanna put this to the audience, just as something to ponder over to keep your attention with the technical demo is, with the clients that you have today, imagine if you introduced them to tape storage way back when, and you were their default tape storage provider, and you as their partner consistently provided them with that information, that thought leadership, and that guidance as to how best manage their tape and long-term backup. What we've got here is the same kind of paradigm where we're able to say to customers, come to the newest form of technology for what you're trying to do and make sure that you leverage that in the right way. So by proposing the lowest cost method of IBM Cloud and also the, the scalability and the security that comes around it, that for us is a proposition which can help you retain those customers and keep them engaged and keep them paying for life. So with something like that, I'll now pass on to Michael, who's going to give us a technical demonstration as to how something like this can be provisioned. Uh, thanks, Jay. Um, I think someone needs to pass me the controls. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, Jay. Um, good afternoon, all. Uh, my name is Michael Newen, uh, and I'm part of the technical sales team uh, for IBM Cloud. Um, so I'll be taking you through a demo of ICOS uh, via the IBM Cloud Console. Um, so the objective is to show the uh, ease of use uh, and also uh, some of the options that we need to take into consideration uh, when we're creating um, our buckets. Um, so here um, on the screen, you can see uh, I've logged into the IBM Cloud Console. Um, firstly, we'll go over to the catalog. So the catalog will list all of the um, IBM Cloud offerings um, and services. Um, you, know, you can search here in the catalog. Um, I've already got object storage down here, so we'll, we'll click on that. Um, so it'll take you through to this page where you create a, an ICOS instance. Um, but firstly, um, you can see here, um, there's actually a light plan uh, that you can use. Um, so if you go and create uh, an IBM cloud account, um, you can actually use and test um, ICOS. Um, uh, you can see there, uh, you get up to 25 gigs per month, uh, uh, no charge. So yeah, if, if you create an IBM cloud account, you can actually go on and, and use it and test it out. Um, so firstly, uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, create an instance. Um, so an instance is like a container or a folder uh, where um, a group of buckets will be created and, and reside. Um, so we'll just give it a name. Go create. Okay, once that's done, uh, we can now go ahead and uh, create our buckets. Um, so a bucket is um, you know, just like a folder, right, where um, you, know, you can uh, add your data or uh, you know, upload uh, your objects. So we create a custom bucket. Um, so buckets use a global namespace. Um, so the name you choose uh, needs to be unique across the IBM cloud. Uh, and if you choose a name that's not unique, it will actually tell you. Uh, so we'll go. 
the moment. It looks okay. Um, so first thing you need to choose your resiliency option. Uh, now there's three options here, uh, cross region, regional and single site. Um, so with cross region, your data is stored across three regions within a geography. Um, this provides the highest um, availability and resiliency. Uh, for example, uh, you know, in Asia Pacific, uh, it could be Sydney, Tokyo, and Hong Kong. Um, so, you know, in the unlikely event that a, a regional uh, or region goes down, um, your data is still available and accessible. Um, and, and the key point here, uh, and something that Arju touched on as well, is you know that there are no data egress charges uh, for data that is moved cross region within ICOS, right? Uh, so this is an advantage uh, with ICOS um, compared to uh, other storage offerings or object storage offerings on the market. Um, we also have regional. Um, so regional is the default resiliency choice um, and it's the best combination of um, availability and performance. Um, you know, data is stored in multiple data centers within a single region. Um, in Australia, uh, we have the benefit of being in a multi-zone region, uh, which is what Arju touched on before, uh, which is in Sydney uh, with multiple data centers. Um, so the data is dispersed across three zones. Uh, so in the event that you know, one DC was to go down, uh, we still have access to the data. Uh, this option is recommended for uh, most use cases. Um, and we also have single sites. So data is stored um, in a single data center across multiple devices or, or multiple pods. Um, uh, with Australia being a multi-zone region, um, this option is not actually available uh, for Australia. So we'll choose regional, um, we'll choose Sydney as the location, um, and then next we need to choose our uh, storage class. Um, so smart tier, um, you know, as you uh, touched on this before, um, you know, it's good for uh, when you don't know your data patterns and activity, um, so you don't know how often data will be accessed. Um, you know, it uses an algorithm to automatically classify um, and cost optimize based on the data activity. So it will help you automatically determine uh, whether objects fall into either hot, cold, uh, or cool um, storage and then determine the relevant pricing tier. Uh, for standard, um, it's used for active workloads uh, where data is accessed uh, more than once a month and there's no charge uh, when you're retrieving the data. Uh, next is Vault uh, for less active workloads or when you know, data is accessed less than once a month. Um, and there is a retrieval charge uh, each time uh, the data is read. Um, and there's Cold Vault. So Cold Vault is for cold workloads, um, you know, where data is accessed every 90 days or less. Um, and there's a larger um, retrieval charge, um, larger than the Vault uh, for every time uh, data is read. Uh, next, we'll need to choose our rules and policies. Um, so first is the arch archive rule. Um, so with archive rules, you can set a specific time frame uh, after which objects can or will move to uh, archive. Um, and there's two options for archive. And you can see here, um, accelerated archive and just standard archive. Um, accelerated archive is a new offering um, so uh, it will give you a faster restore time of up to two hours versus standard archive um, where it's a restore time of up to 12 hours. So depending on your, you know, I guess, RPO, um, you can choose the relevant um, archive option. Um, you can also choose uh, expiration. Um, so it allows you to schedule uh, deletion of objects, uh, for example, you know, in this bucket, you want objects to be deleted after 30 days. Um, you can set that um, period. And retention policy. Um, I can't actually choose it in here because you need a standard plan, um, but retention policy. Um, so if you need to retain data for a certain period of time, uh, you know, maybe you need to adhere to uh, regulatory compliance. Um, this will provide you with immutable object storage. Uh, it's like it's like worm media, right? So write once, read many. Um, once you set up the retention policy, uh, the data within the bucket cannot be altered or deleted um, until the retention period is up. 
Um, all object storage, sorry, all object stored in uh, cloud object storage is encrypted by default. Um, you know, for clients uh, that need to be in possession of uh, encryption keys, um, keys can either be managed by the client or by using uh, IBM Key Protect. Um, so IBM Key Protect is a um, uh, is IBM's key management service. Um, you know, it allows customers to bring your own key. Um, it allows customers to store and manage the life cycle of keys. Um, you know, it uses cloud-based uh, hardware uh, security modules, um, uh, and it's, it's certified on FIPS 142 Level 3. Um, we also have HyperProtect crypto services. Um, so this is an extra layer uh, of security over KeyProtect. Um, it uses uh, single tenant HSMs, um, it's controlled by the customer, and it's built on FIPS 142 level four certified hardware. Um, this is the highest offered by any cloud provider. Um, so the HSMs provide you know, tamper proof, um, key order deletion, uh, which ensures uh, that your workloads are always safe. Um, it allows customers to um, basically keep, keep your own keys. Um, why is this important? Um, it provides technical assurance, uh, not just operational assurance, but technical assurance um, of no unauthorized access. You know, even IBM doesn't and cannot access the customer's data. Um, ICOS also integrates with um, identity and access management um, tools within IBM Cloud. Uh, so you can set up um, access to buckets uh, by setting up users, groups and roles. Um, which also add another layer of security. Um, and you can also use additional services such as uh, LogDNA and SysDig. Um, so LogDNA is for audit logging, um, you know, so who did what and when. Um, and SysDig is a monitoring tool, um, so it can provide you metrics such as um, you know, space use, number of objects, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll go standard and we'll create a bucket. Um, so now we've created our bucket. Um, you know, you can uh, easily um, upload files uh, into your bucket. Uh, um, the the maximum file size or the maximum maximum object size is 10 terabytes. Um, you know, you can do multi-part uploads uh, for larger objects. Um, so you can upload, so you can break um, larger objects into, I guess, smaller chunks and do, you know, or an upload in parallel. Um, to help you with speed, or you can use um, Aspera transfers, uh, which is what Arju touched on before as well. Um, Aspera transfers is based on um, the FASP protocol, uh, which is up to 100 times faster than um, HTTP or FTP. Um, and you know, when using Aspera transfers, um, when you're uploading data, um, there's no charges or, or additional charges um, for ingress data. Um, uh, as I said before, it integrates with um, identity and access management. Um, so you can go in here and set your access policies uh, for your bucket. Um, you, know, you can set uh, user access, so determine um, you know, which users you want to have access and what type of access you want to give certain users. Um, you can create service IDs, so giving um, other resources within the IBM Cloud um, access or, or to update certain things in the bucket. Um, and you can also uh, provide public assets uh, to the bucket as well. Um, here you'll see the endpoints. Um, so uh, we'll use the regional endpoints. Um, you can see public, private, and direct endpoints. Um, so, so public endpoints, you know, you can re request or accept the request from anywhere. Um, and there are charges on outgoing bandwidth. Um, incoming bandwidth is, is free. Um, so public endpoints should be used for access uh, that's, that's not within the IBM cloud. Um, private endpoints, uh, it's for requests that are coming from within IBM cloud. Uh, when you use private endpoints, um, there's no data ingress or egress charges um, because the traffic stays within the IBM cloud. And we also have direct endpoints as well. Um, so primarily used for um, bring your own IP scenarios um, or conjunction with our 
a VPC offering, a virtual private cloud offering. Um, yeah, if you, if, if you plan on using iCOS as a backup target, um, it integrates out of the box with most major backup providers, um, example, um, you know, IBM Spectrum Protect, uh, Veeam, um, and Commvault, et cetera. Uh, I think Arju gave us a um, slide which showed um, most of the um, backup providers that uh, it integrates with. Um, so that concludes the demo. Um, I will pass it back to Jay um, to see if there's any further questions. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, if there's any questions, please post them now. Uh, otherwise, also being aware that we are getting close to our allotted time. If you want to stay with us, we will keep going until we've finished everything. Uh, but for those that might have to jump off for a call or something along those lines, thank you very much. And if you do have any questions, we are always here and as am I. So what we'll be doing now is passing to Tash and Tash will show us how we can go and provision this from IBM, from, sorry, from Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace. Thank you, Jay. I'm going to run through this pretty quick. Um, do the time constraints but there's a few key parts of ordering on the marketplace that I think are really um, important if my waiting for my slide to move forward mm, aha there we are so I hope that most of you are familiar with our marketplace au.cloud.im uh, this is where IBM Cloud sits under infrastructure, and then within IBM Cloud is object storage, amongst a plethora of other awesome solutions and services like VMware, etc. So, when you go into the landing page, the most important thing I want to make sure everyone's aware of is the bottom right here, and oh, sorry, bottom left. <laughs> bottom left, circled in red, is the estimated cost calculator. That is really important, especially if you're new to IBM Cloud or Object Storage in this instance, to understand what your consumption value will look like. And that link will take you to the IBM page. And to be honest, I think at this point, if you haven't used that before, it's probably best to get in contact with Jay or maybe Angesh in our um, IBM Ingram team to assist with that if you need if you need help, um, you go into that to give yourself an idea of how much consumption um, you're looking at. Uh, the other important uh, tab on this page is the resources tab, which I've just highlighted there on the right. There's a lot of wonderful links that IBM's provided as well about, um, about products and their functionality. Once you have gone to the calculator, you're satisfied with the amount of or credits, let's call them credits you want to buy, you come back to this page. And then from here, you log into the marketplace, which then takes you to the IBM Cloud page. And as you can see, there's there's only a few SKUs. They're all monthly at this point. Annual SKUs will be added in the very short weeks to come. We're recommending pay-as-you-go subscriptions at the moment because unless you're really certain how much consumption you are going to have in a month, i.e. how many credits you're going to use, they will expire after that month, which is why we're really pushing to get the annual SKUs up there because they expire in a year. So this is all pretty straightforward as any e-commerce site would be, as you could imagine. Um, we've already emphasized the pay-as-you-go choice at this point, unless you are certain about how much consumption you are going to be using, and then you can take advantage of the discounts. Um, selecting your existing customers or adding a new customer is all very normal to our e-commerce site as well. Uh, the other main point I really want to emphasize here is the IBM ID and the definition of what that is, which is really the email address that you want to use to receive your information about the service. Uh, you need to be an IBM business partner, it's kind of a given, uh, and the second important Important factor that you may not know as an IBM business partner new to the 
Ingram Marketplace is you do need to apply for an, in, um, an IBM Cloud Marketplace reseller approval number called the CMR. I've put the link there, but again, Jay or Angesh can help you with navigating the IBM site to apply for that number. It basically acknowledges to IBM that you want to, to have the service provisioned over the Ingram market, Cloud Marketplace as opposed to um, PPA or all the other traditional ways that you may have provisioned. And, and that's the, which I, this is what we're trying to, to show you here is it's much easier to go down this route. It's much easier to manage than the traditional IBM route. Um, so that's that's the two biggest things. There's an estimate, a cloud, cloud, IBM cloud calculator for estimating usage that I think is important that you explore and also getting your CMR number. And that's a 24 hour process. That is not, um, uh, showstopper in any way, shape, or form. Um, and then, as for any e-commerce site, you you agree to the terms, you click buy now, and then this is this is the fun bit. The email address that you supplied previously is where the feature code will be sent to, which is your key to go back into the IBM Cloud site listed up there on the top right, to go into your account to then apply the code that unlocks all the credit that you have just purchased through us. And then you're off and away to spin up whatever uh, solutions that you need to. And in this instant, it's a uh, kind of storage. Um, I've kept that really short and sweet, Jay, so you can go ahead and take um, presentation rights off of me again. Uh, it's just to give you a, a bit of visual cues to what to expect when you're working with Ingram and why we're trying to make this whole process easier for the guys. But I think it's best, yeah, to come to you, I guess, really, at the, if, when they're at this point. Unreal, absolutely. And what, what we're doing for anyone that wants to use this new distribution route, we will walk you through and hold your hand through the first couple of times to make sure you're comfortable with it. Just like if you were placing an order on any new partner, we want to make sure that this is something you're absolutely fine with. Thank you, Tash. You are very welcome. Outstanding. So, quick plug for our Harley Davidson campaign. If you haven't already signed up, essentially we're trying to give away a Harley Davidson live wire electric bike, which is the first electric motorcycle Harley Davidson has ever won, has ever, sorry, uh, created. There will be uh, an email sent out after this with a link so you can sign up to be a part of it. Essentially, to get entries, you need to procure through Ingram Micro, Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace, as Tash just showed you. So here to help out with that. Um, it's definitely something not to be missed. We have different sprints with different kinds of webinars or prizes and giveaways throughout uh, for different certifications. We've been offering uh, expert level Lego bikes of a Harley Davidson. So I think that's pretty cool. And we've seen a lot of people uptake those. Um, this is an example of one of those, which is our Hyper Protect badge for super secure uh, cloud workloads. You can see in the bottom left hand corner, there's one of the Lego bikes that we've been giving away, which is about the size of an A4 piece of paper. So definitely not small. All right, so win the helmet and the gloves, we have our question here on screen. What are the storage class tiers available in IBM Cloud Object Storage? Um, and how does that differentiate it from other offerings? So post that in the chat window if you know the answer now, otherwise feel free to email myself and feel free to call it out if you do find the answer afterwards. First person to get it will win a Harley Davidson helmet and gloves, so they are absolute top quality. So feel free to find those answers, make a phone a friend, hopefully you've been listening uh, throughout the day and can answer it off the top of your head. But the first person to get that will win the prize. Okay. Obviously, I can't um, answer the question, I guess, yeah. Jay. I don't think <laughs> just so. checking. I was just checking. <laughs> okay. Kathy, can you confirm that that is our um, that is our winner? Okay, so we've got a few answers coming through at the moment. 
Um, keep sending through your answers because obviously if you send through the wrong one, we won't close it off now and say, okay, well, we've got a winner. We want to make sure that we give this to the person that's got the answer. So keep sending them through and we'll send out in the email afterwards who's won the prize, which is fantastic to see so many people letting us know uh, their, their answer for it. So at the moment, while you're thinking about those different tier options, wondering if anyone has any questions about what you've seen today uh, about cloud object storage about ingram micro marketplace and procuring through there the harley davidson campaign how can we help answer your questions i know it's been a long webinar so thank you for sticking with us um, but if there are any questions that you do have or want answered feel free to post them in the chat window below Just waiting to see what comes through. Okay. So we've got one here, which is a, a really common one. Um, I've certainly had this from customers a lot when I was client side. Is cloud object storage comparable to AWS S3 in terms of size of data that can be stored? uh what do you think we can sell against s3 as some of our customers who are on s3 so from my point of view s3 is not for the long-term storage that we typically see it's more of a storage class that is in and out in and out in and out for something like an sap workload in one of the one of the things that comes with aws storage typically is that you need to configure it to be as secure as you need and you need to set those rules those parameters perfectly because no one else is going to do it for you aws takes no uh, no onus on doing that themselves and we've seen more than enough data breaches where information has been accessed via a public s3 bucket link and taken to customers and being ransomed off so obviously worst case scenario so I would say we're not really comparing apples for apples when we're talking about S3 and cloud object storage. However, Amazon Glacier, which I believe is their equivalent to, uh, to IBM cloud object storage, in terms of the availability, I believe IBM has more data centers here in Australia connected as a multi-zone region, meaning that the disaster recovery and resiliency prospects is much higher for those customers who are worried about where is my data in case of an emergency or an earthquake or a fire it's always okay and also the cost when we look at cloud object storage that actually does come in at below aws glacier especially when you look at things like data ingress and egress which when you're talking to a customer telling them that they're not going to have to pay for their own um, they're not going to have to pay for to access their own data and to read what is theirs. I think that is a really, really powerful, um, powerful differentiator between Amazon and um, IBM Cloud Object Storage. And the second question that's just gone through, uh, I'll answer this one quickly knowing uh, our time is obviously over, is what are the resiliency choices that we have for Australia? Can I pick any of the IBM data centers or I, am I limited to a few? Good question, very in-depth, so I love it. My best answer at this is that there are different resiliency choices based on how often you need to pull that information out and put it back in. So that's why it's really important to almost audit your data storage requirements beforehand and IBM or Ingram can help with that to make sure that you're selecting the right kind of storage. There are more secure ways to store this. You can even encrypt it as well online. And when we look at IBM data centers in Australia, because of our data sovereignty laws, there are, I believe, three available and all of those operate in a multi-zone region, meaning they are Australia in the Asia Pacific region, and you can elect to have your data stored just in Australia or throughout Asia Pacific. But when it's just in Australia, what that does is it makes sure that there's copies at multiple data centers so that you do have 
that resiliency as well, which for this kind of information is super important because you have customers that only feel safe if they're storing their data on their personnel, on their site or someone, maybe I've heard it in the IT manager's garage before is where we've kept tapes. So that's something I believe is a big differentiator to know that it can be kept in Australia at different places of your choice, but automatically and by default, it'll be stored across different regions. So that's the second question. If you do have any more, send them through or pick up the phone, we'll be happy to answer. Uh, I see we've got a few answers for the helmet and gloves. So what we'll do is we'll make, we'll cross check that with who was first and who was, um, who's absolutely correct. We don't want any in between because we had a few answers and we will notify the winner and we'll also put that in the newsletter to let everyone know that we are keeping true to the word and giving away some of these fantastic prizes that we do have from Harley Davidson. And I think as well, what we'll do is for anyone that did submit an answer, I think we'll run a, a lucky door prize. Thank you for coming and also thank you for having a go and we'll send you a small prize pack as well just to make sure that you're feeling the love for your time because we, we understand that webinars happen all day, every day. So we, we really appreciate your time coming today. With that guys, I really appreciate the time. I think uh, we're at one fifth, sorry, we're at uh, 15 minutes past. So we will wrap it up there. If you do have any questions, again, my name's Jay uh, from the Ingram Micro team, looking after IBM exclusively, previously worked at IBM. So I've got a good idea of how things work and how to get the best result. Uh, my number will be at the bottom of the email that'll come out after this. So feel free to get in touch with any questions or points of view, or even just to shoot the breeze and see how we can help. And we can go from there. Enjoy the rest of the day, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Thank you all. Thanks, Jay. Talk to you later. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.